That being said, I would like to dedicate the next couple of minutes to not only Jamie Rodemeyer, but also to the It Gets Better project. Um, this will actually be on their website if mm -hmm. I can get Pick my button gear and get it on there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Uh, you go first. Okay. <sighs> okay. First of all, I have never publicly spoken about most of the things that I'm about to talk about. So it gets hard. Um, for those of you that don't know, my real name is Rebecca Harlan. I am about to be 22 years old. Um, I am bisexual, but not only am I bisexual, I am also an adult that has seen that it gets better. <clears throat> when I was 13 years old, well, no, I'll back it up. When I was 11 years old, I was diagnosed with depression. Um, I was kind of an outcast. I got bullied every day in school. I got called everything from a dyke to a devil worshiper to you know, anything you can imagine. I was an outcast. And I didn't have a lot of friends. <clears throat> when I was 13, um, it got so bad, not only because of the bullying, but because of the um, psychiatric drugs that I was on. Um, they basically enabled me to not feel anything. And a lot of people say they want that. But when you feel that, for, or when you feel nothing for a few months, you begin to feel like a zombie. You feel less human. And uh, as a result, I would do things just to feel something. Um, as a result, now uh, my left arm, specifically. I mean, I've got some all over my body, but I targeted my left arm because I'm right-handed. Is covered in mounds of scar tissue because I would literally mutilate myself just to feel. Um, when that stopped working, I tried to kill myself by means of overdose. Um, while I was actually, it was I had to be rushed to the hospital. They pumped my stomach, and I stayed in the ICU that night. Um, not only on suicide watch, but on death watch, because they thought I was going to die. A few days later, I was sent off to a mental rehabilitation center, and I was kept there for nine days. I was not allowed outside. Um, it was like prison. Um, I wasn't allowed outside. I was under constant observation, even in the shower. Um, and keep in mind, I'm 13 years old. I'm going through puberty, so... You know, I'm already ashamed and you know, shy, so now I'm having to undress in front of strangers, and um, I was bullied. Even there, even in the place that I was, that you know, is supposed to help you, I was bullied, and um, I mean, it was hell. And I just basically gave up. But the last day that I was there, that turned everything around. Um, was I had one counselor. His name was Alex, and I will always remember that name. Um, he told me, he brought me into his office, and he said, you know, I've been watching you, and I've seen the way that you interact with people around you. He said, I know what it is. Normal therapy isn't going to work for you, and this isn't uncommon. He said, "What the only way that you are really going to be able to help yourself is if you help others. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what he meant. He said, sometimes the most therapeutic thing you can do is to help someone else. Because in a way, psychologically, you are stepping in and being the counselor for yourself. But you're counseling someone else. And I took that with me and I thought about it and I realized that I, that's, that really is how I am. It doesn't matter how bad I feel. Even if I'm at the low where, you know, that bottle of pills on the table looks quite tempting. If one of my friends comes to me and tells me they have a problem, no matter how big or how small, I help them. And so that's my advice to all of you. If you see someone being bullied or just sitting there by themselves or upset something, talk to them. Reach out to them. Be that person for them. Because one of the worst feelings you will ever go through 
is feeling like you are the only person in the world who understands this. And that's just not true. You're not. There are millions of people who have been through this who understand. And that's one of the hardest lessons you learn, that you're not alone. So take it how you will, and I really hope that helps someone. Do not do not be ashamed to talk to someone, whether it be a therapist or your friends or your family. Someone reach out as hard as you can because we do not need more people to die. You are important to someone, and it doesn't matter who you are, who you love, what color your skin is. We all are important. We're all here for a reason, whatever religion you're part of. We're all here for a purpose. Do not ever doubt that you are any less than perfect. And yes, I stole that from Pink. Get over it. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I suppose that means it's my turn. Okay. I'm Belinda Hamilton. I am almost 29. And I am an adult who knows that it gets better. I am not gay. I'm not lesbian. I'm not bisexual. And I am not transgender. But I am different. Uh, I have an eye condition called blepharophimosis, epicanthus inversus, just to be really technical. And it <laughs> means that my eyes don't look normal. So I've had surgeries to sort of help them to look a little bit more normal. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter how many surgeries I have, my eyes are never going to look normal. And while I was growing up, this really made the difference with a lot of the people that I went to school with. So... It was, you know, one of those moments when, you know, you've had the absolute crappiest day on earth and then you decide that you need to speak to someone and I'm pretty sure my mum was working and my dad didn't live with us at the time and he was out of contact and I'm trying to ring my grandmother, I'm trying to ring you know, the other grandparents, I'm trying to ring my aunties, my uncles, my friends, my cousins, anyone in my family's uh, phone book. And everybody that particular night was busy. And I can remember being so lost and feeling so alone and not knowing what the hell to do next, thinking this is just too much. I cannot handle this. And I'm pretty sure I just cried myself to sleep that night. And I woke up the next morning and I basically thought, I don't want to do this all over again. But I got up and I just kept going. And, you know, it just kept going like that for a while. And then you decide that, you know what, this sucks. I need to change what I'm doing. And I think it did come down to me helping other people. So, yeah, exactly what you'd said, Becca. You know, exactly what you'd said. You need to go out and you need to look beyond yourself. It doesn't matter how many times you've been bullied. If you can look outside yourself and stop that focus from being entirely about your misery, it helps just that little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then I became a teen mother, which was hard in itself, and then I went through postnatal depression. Mm-hmm. The drugs didn't work. They actually reacted quite badly. And I ended up having to go through postnatal depression without the aid of medication. So, again, helping others really pulled me out of, my, out of that feeling. Out of that feeling of being out of control. So I got to decide how I would feel. And you do get to decide how you're going to feel. Don't allow others to completely rule your emotion. Decide that you're not going to let them get to you. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. But that's the way it should be. You should not be letting people get into your soul and and decimate what you believe to be the truth about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it does get better. Yes. Sometimes you can't see it. And sometimes you think this road is never going to end <clears throat> Sorry. I mean, you know, there have been many times being – I'm bipolar, and, you know, everyone that knows me knows that. And I have made 
many, many a 3 a.m. phone call just saying, look, just please talk to me. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> when you're in that mode, the only sometimes the only thing that can help pull you back out is just remembering this does go away. It will get better. Mm-hmm. And it does. It really does. I mean, it takes it a little while, and sometimes it just gets hard to remind yourself that. But it does. It will go away. You know, high school doesn't last forever, <clears throat> even though it feels like it does. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, if you're bipolar or depressed or any other uh, mental thing, I hate saying disease because it, it does it, – that just gives it such a bad stigma. But you know, a mental issue, that's what we'll say. Mm. It gets better. It really does. You just have to find what works for you and just make it work. Write. You know, sit there and write, scribble, tear up paper, you know, all this. Yell, scream, go outside and just have a fit. Throw yourself on the ground. Do something. Beat up a pillow. That's what one of my therapists told me was whenever I get really pissed off, just go beat up a pillow. It never works. So then I started (laughs) posting pictures on the pillow and just beating the crap out of it. It helps. It really does. Mm. So, you know, do whatever works for you, but don't. Don't deny the world the joy of knowing you. Exactly. Okay. I think we need to pick this up a little bit. What do you reckon? I agree. I definitely agree. But I do want to say one other thing. You know, Belinda, you and I, we both kind of, you know, as we just stated, we both went through a really troubled past. And I think it was the exact same thing that kind of pulled both of us out of the thing. And that was our dear friend, Lenore. Mm -hmm. Which is why, you know, for those of you that don't know, a few months back, we did an interview with her. She has cancer. Yes. And it's very terminal, right? At this point, at this point, it's literally a touch go anything could happen yeah um so she's been there and i think that's why it hits both of us so hard yes you know if the worst thing you're getting is bullying be grateful because the bullying will end cancer not necessarily mm-hmm. so okay let's pick this up a little bit i've got one of my daggy songs here yay do you want to know the name of the band Okay. Fatty gets a stylist. Oh, God. Seriously? Are you ready? Okay. 